geopolitics from Greek gay gay earth land and politica politica politics is the study of the effects of earth's geography human and physical on politics and international relations while geopolitics usually refers to countries and relations between them, it may also focus on two other kinds of states, de facto independent states with limited international recognition and, relations between sub-national geopolitical entities, such as the federated states that make up a federation, confederation or a quasi-federal system. At the level of international relations, geopolitics is a method of studying foreign policy to understand, explain and predict international political behavior through geographical variables. These include area studies, climate, topography, demography, natural resources, and applied science of the region being evaluated. Geopolitics focuses on political power linked to geographic space. In particular, territorial waters and land territory in correlation with diplomatic history. Topics of geopolitics include relations between the interests of international political actors and interests focused within an area, a space, or a geographical element, relations which create a geopolitical system. Critical geopolitics deconstructs classical geopolitical theories, by showing their political, ideological functions for great powers. According to Christopher Gogwilt and other researchers, the term is currently being used to describe a broad spectrum of concepts, in a general sense used as a synonym for international political relations, but more specifically, to imply the global structure of such relations, which builds on early 20th century term for a pseudoscience of political geography and other pseudoscientific theories of historical and geographic determinism. Topic: <laughs> United States. Topic: Alfred Thayer Mahon and Sea Power. Alfred Thayer Mahon (1840–1914), a frequent commentator on world naval strategic and diplomatic affairs, believed that national greatness was inextricably associated with the sea and particularly with its commercial use in peace and its control in war. Mayen's theoretical framework came from Antoine Henry Jomini, and emphasized that strategic locations such as choke points, canals, and coaling stations, as well as quantifiable levels of fighting power in a fleet, were conducive to control over the sea. He proposed six conditions required for a nation to have sea power, advantageous geographical position serviceable coastlines abundant natural resources and favorable climate extent of territory population large enough to defend its territory society with an aptitude for the sea and commercial enterprise and Government with the influence and inclination to dominate the sea. Mayan distinguished a key region of the world in the Eurasian context, namely, the central zone of Asia lying between 30 degrees and 40 degrees north and stretching from Asia Minor to Japan. In this zone, independent countries still survived Turkey. Persia, Afghanistan, China, and Japan. 
Mahon regarded those countries, located between Britain and Russia, as if between Scylla and Charybdis. Of the two monsters, Britain and Russia, it was the latter that Mahon considered more threatening to the fate of Central Asia. Mahon was impressed by Russia's transcontinental size and strategically favorable position for southward expansion. Therefore, he found it necessary for the Anglo-Saxon sea power to resist Russia. Topic: <laughs> Homer Lee Homer Lee in The Day of the Saxon 1912, described that the entire Anglo-Saxon race faced a threat from German Teuton, Russian Slav, and Japanese expansionism, the «fatal» relationship of Russia, Japan, and Germany has now assumed through the urgency of natural forces a coalition directed against the survival of Saxon supremacy. It is a dreadful Drebund. Lee believed that while Japan moved against Far East and Russia against India, the Germans would strike at England, the centre of the British Empire. He thought the Anglo-Saxons faced certain disaster from their militant opponents. Topic: <laughs> Kissinger, Bjezinski and the Grand Chessboard. Two famous security advisers from the Cold War period, Henry Kissinger and Zbigniew Brzezinski, argued to continue the United States' geopolitical focus on Eurasia and, particularly on Russia, despite the dissolution of the USSR and the end of the Cold War. Both continued their influence on geopolitics after the end of the Cold War, writing books on the subject in the 1990s. Diplomacy, Kissinger 1994, and the Grand Chessboard, American Primacy and its Geostrategic Imperatives. The Anglo-American classical geopolitical theories were revived. Kissinger argued against the approach that with the dissolution of the USSR hostile intentions had disappeared and traditional foreign policy considerations no longer applied. They would argue, that Russia, regardless of who govern it, sits astride the territory Halford Mackinder called the geopolitical heartland, and is the heir to one of the most potent imperial traditions. Therefore the United States must maintain the global balance of power vis-a-vis -vis the country with a long history of expansionism. After Russia, the second geopolitical threat remained Germany and, as Mackinder had feared 90 years ago, its partnership with Russia. During the Cold War, Kissinger argues, both sides of the Atlantic recognized that, "...unless America is organically involved in Europe, it would be obliged to involve itself later under circumstances far less favorable to both sides of the Atlantic. That is even more true today. Germany has become so strong that existing European institutions cannot by themselves strike a balance between Germany and its European partners. Nor can Europe, even with Germany, manage by itself, Russia." Thus Kissinger belied it is in no country's interest that Germany and Russia should fixate on each other as a principal partner. They would raise fears of condominium. Without America, Britain and France cannot cope with Germany and Russia, and 
Without Europe, America could turn, into an island off the shores of Eurasia." Spikeman's vision of Eurasia was strongly confirmed. Geopolitically, America is an island off the shores of the large landmass of Eurasia, whose resources and population far exceed those of the United States. The domination by a single power of either of Eurasia's two principal spheres Europe and Asia remains a good definition of strategic danger for America. Cold War or no Cold War. For such a grouping would have the capacity to outstrip America economically and, in the end, militarily. That danger would have to be resisted even were the dominant power apparently benevolent, for if the intentions ever changed, America would find itself with a grossly diminished capacity for effective resistance and a growing inability to shape events. The main interest of the American leaders is maintaining the balance of power in Eurasia. Having converted from ideologist into geopolitician, Kissinger in retrospect interpreted the Cold War in geopolitical terms an approach not characteristic for his works during the Cold War. Now, however, he stressed on the beginning of the Cold War. The objective of moral opposition to communism had merged with the geopolitical task of containing the Soviet expansion. Nixon, he added, was geopolitical rather than ideological cold warrior. Three years after Kissinger's diplomacy, Bezhezinsky followed suit, launching the Grand Chessboard, American primacy and its geostrategic imperatives, and, after three more years, the geostrategic triad, living with China, Europe, and Russia. The Grand Chessboard described the American triumph in the Cold War in terms of control over Eurasia, for the first time ever, a non Eurasian power had emerged as a key arbiter of Eurasian power relations. The book states its purpose. The formulation of a comprehensive and integrated Eurasian geostrategy is therefore the purpose of this book. Although the power configuration underwent a revolutionary change, Bezhezinsky confirmed three years later, Eurasia was still a megacontinent. Like Spikeman, Bezhezinsky acknowledges that. Cumulatively, Eurasia's power vastly overshadows America's. In classical Spikeman terms, Bezhezinsky formulized his geostrategic chessboard doctrine of Eurasia, which aims to prevent the unification of this megacontinent. Europe and Asia are politically and economically powerful. It follows that, American foreign policy must, employ its influence in Eurasia in a manner that creates a stable continental equilibrium, with the United States as the political arbiter. Eurasia is thus the chessboard on which the struggle for global primacy continues to be played, and that struggle involves geo strategy the strategic management of geopolitical interests. But in the meantime it is imperative that no Eurasian challenger emerges, capable of dominating Eurasia and thus also of challenging America. For America the chief geopolitical prize is Eurasia, dot and America's global primacy is directly dependent on how long and how effectively its preponderance on the Eurasian continent is sustained. <laughs> United Kingdom Uh, 
Topic: <laughs> Emil Reich. The Austro-Hungarian historian Emil Reich (1854–1910) is considered to be the first having coined the acceptance in English as early as 1902, and later published in England in 1904 in his book Foundations of Modern Europe. Topic Mackinder and the Heartland Theory Sir Halford Mackinder's Heartland Theory initially received little attention outside geography, but some thinkers would claim that it subsequently influenced the foreign policies of world powers. Those scholars who look to Mackinder through critical lenses accept him as an organic strategist who tried to build a foreign policy vision for Britain with his Eurocentric analysis of historical geography. His formulation of the Heartland theory was set out in his article entitled The Geographical Pivot of History, published in England in 1904. Mackinder's doctrine of geopolitics involved concepts diametrically opposed to the notion of Alfred Thayer Mayen about the significance of navies he coined the term sea power in world conflict. He saw navy as a basis of Columbian era empire roughly from 1492 to the 19th century, and predicted the 20th century to be domain of land power. The Heartland theory hypothesized a huge empire being brought into existence in the Heartland, which wouldn't need to use coastal or transoceanic transport to remain coherent. The basic notions of Mackinder's doctrine involve considering the geography of the Earth as being divided into two sections, the world island or core, comprising Eurasia and Africa, and the peripheral islands, including the Americas, Australia, Japan, the British Isles, and Oceania. Not only was the periphery noticeably smaller than the world island, it necessarily required much sea transport to function at the technological level of the world island, which contained sufficient natural resources for a developed economy. Mackinder posited that the industrial centers of the periphery were necessarily located in widely separated locations. The World Island could send its navy to destroy each one of them in turn, and could locate its own industries in a region further inland than the periphery so they would have a longer struggle reaching them, and would face a well-stocked industrial bastion. Mackinder called this region the Heartland. It essentially comprised Central and Eastern Europe, Ukraine, Western Russia, and Mitteleuropa. The heartland contained the grain reserves of Ukraine, and many other natural resources. Mackinder's notion of geopolitics was summed up when he said, who rules Central and Eastern Europe commands the heartland. Who rules the heartland commands the world island. Who rules the world island commands the world. Nicholas J. Spikeman is both a follower and critic of geostrategists Alfred Mayen, and Halford Mackinder. His work is based on assumptions similar to Mackinder's, including the unity of world politics and the world sea. He extends this to include the unity of the air. Spikeman adopts Mackinder's divisions of the world, renaming some, the Heartland, the Rimland analogous to Mackinder's inner or marginal crescent also an intermediate region, lying between the Heartland and the marginal sea powers, and the offshore islands and continents Mackinder's outer or insular crescent. Under Spikeman's theory, a Rimland separates the Heartland from ports that are usable throughout the year that is, not frozen up during winter. 
Spikeman suggested this required that attempts by heartland nations particularly Russia to conquer ports in the Rimland must be prevented. Spikeman modified Mackinder's formula on the relationship between the Heartland and the Rimland or the Inner Crescent, claiming that who controls the Rimland rules Eurasia. Who rules Eurasia controls the destinies of the world. This theory can be traced in the origins of containment, a U.S. policy on preventing the spread of Soviet influence after World War II see also Truman Doctrine. Another famous follower of Mackinder was Karl Haushofer who called Mackinder's geographical pivot of history a "...genius scientific tractate." He commented on it. Never have I seen anything greater than those few pages of geopolitical masterwork. Mackinder located his pivot, in the words of Haushofer, on one of the first solid, geopolitically and geographically irreproachable maps, presented to one of the earliest scientific forums of the planet, the Royal Geographic Society in London. Haushofer adopted both Mackinder's Heartland thesis and his view of the Russian German alliance, powers that Mackinder saw as the major contenders for control of Eurasia in the 20th century. Following Mackinder, he suggested an alliance with the Soviet Union and, advancing a step beyond Mackinder, added Japan to his design of the Eurasian bloc. In 2004, at the centenary of the geographical pivot of history, famous historian Paul Kennedy wrote Right now, with hundreds of thousands of U.S. troops in the Eurasian Rimlands and with administration constantly explaining why it has to stay the course, it looks as if Washington is taking seriously Mackinder's injunction to ensure control of the geographical pivot of history. <laughs> Germany German geopolitic is characterized by the belief that life of states, being similar to those of human beings and animals, is shaped by scientific determinism and social Darwinism. German geopolitics develops the concept of Lebensraum living space that is thought to be necessary to the development of a nation like a favorable natural environment would be for animals. Friedrich Ratzel Friedrich Ratzel (1844–1904), influenced by thinkers such as Darwin and zoologist Ernst Heinrich Haeckel, contributed to geopolitic by the expansion on the biological conception of geography without a static conception of borders. Positing that states are organic and growing, with borders representing only a temporary stop in their movement, he held that the expanse of a state's borders is a reflection of the health of the nation—meaning that static countries are in decline. Ratzel published several papers, among which was the essay, Lebensraum. 1901, concerning biogeography. Ratzel created a foundation for the German variant of geopolitics, geopolitik. Influenced by the American geostrategist Alfred Thayer Mayen, Ratzel wrote of aspirations for German naval reach, agreeing that sea power was self-sustaining, as the profit from trade would pay for the merchant marine, unlike land power. The geopolitical theory of Ratzel has been criticized as being too sweeping, and his interpretation of human history and geography being too simple and mechanistic. 
Critically, he also underestimated the importance of social organization in the development of power. The association of German geopolitic with Nazism After World War I, the thoughts of Rudolf Kjellein and Ratzel were picked up and extended by a number of German authors such as Karl Haushofer (1869–1946), Erich Obst, Hermann Lautensack and Otto Maul. In 1923, Karl Haushofer founded the Zeitschrift für Geopolitik Journal for Geopolitics, which was later used in the propaganda of Nazi Germany. The key concepts of Haushofer's geopolitik were Lebensraum, Autarchy, Pan-Regions, and Organic Borders. States have, Haushofer argued, an undeniable right to seek natural borders which would guarantee autarky. Haushofer's influence within the Nazi Party has recently been challenged, given that Haushofer failed to incorporate the Nazis' racial ideology into his work. Popular views of the role of geopolitics in the Nazi Third Reich suggest a fundamental significance on the part of the geopoliticians in the ideological orientation of the Nazi state. Basson reveals that these popular views are in important ways misleading and incorrect. Despite the numerous similarities and affinities between the two doctrines, geopolitics was always held suspect by the National Socialist ideologists. This was understandable, for the underlying philosophical orientation of geopolitics did not comply with that of National Socialism. Geopolitics shared Ratzel's scientific materialism and geographic determinism, and held that human society was determined by external influences—in the face of which qualities held innately by individuals or groups were of reduced or no significance. National Socialism rejected in principle both materialism and determinism and also elevated innate human qualities, in the form of a hypothesized racial character, to the factor of greatest significance in the constitution of human society. These differences led after 1933 to friction and ultimately to open denunciation of geopolitics by Nazi ideologues. Nevertheless, German geopolitik was discredited by its mis use in Nazi expansionist policy of World War II and has never achieved standing comparable to the pre-war period. The resultant negative association, particularly in U.S. academic circles, between classical geopolitics and Nazi or imperialist ideology, is based on loose justifications. This has been observed in particular by critics of contemporary academic geography, and proponents of a neo classical geopolitics in particular. These include Havelock et al., who argue that the stigmatization of geopolitics in academia is unhelpful as geopolitics as a field of positivist inquiry maintains potential in researching and resolving topical, often politicized issues such as conflict resolution and prevention, and mitigating climate change. Topic. Disciplinary differences in perspectives Negative associations with the term, "'geopolitics' 
and its practical application stemming from its association with World War II and pre-World War II German scholars and students of geopolitics are largely specific to the field of academic geography, and especially sub-disciplines of human geography such as political geography. However, this negative association is not as strong in disciplines such as history or political science, which make use of geopolitical concepts. Classical geopolitics forms an important element of analysis for military history as well as for sub-disciplines of political science such as international relations and security studies. This difference in disciplinary perspectives is addressed by Bert Chapman in Geopolitics, a guide to the issues, in which Chapman makes note that academic and professional international relations journals are more amenable to the study and analysis of geopolitics, and in particular classical geopolitics, than contemporary academic journals in the field of political geography. In disciplines outside geography, geopolitics is not negatively viewed, as it often is among academic geographers such as Carolyn Gallagher or Klaus Dodds, as a tool of imperialism or associated with Nazism, but rather viewed as a valid and consistent manner of assessing major international geopolitical circumstances and events, not necessarily related to armed conflict or military operations. France French geopolitical doctrines broadly opposed to German geopolitic and reject the idea of a fixed geography. French geography is focused on the evolution of polymorphic territories being the result of mankind's actions. It also relies on the consideration of long time periods through a refusal to take specific events into account. This method has been theorized by Professor Lacoste according to three principles, representation, diachrony, and diatopy. In the spirit of the laws, Montesquieu outlined the view that man and societies are influenced by climate. He believed that hotter climates create hot-tempered people and colder climates aloof people, whereas the mild climate of France is ideal for political systems. Considered as one of the founders of French geopolitics, Élisée Recluse, is the author of a book considered as a reference in modern geography Nouvelle Géographie Universelle. Alike Ratzel, he considers geography through a global vision. However, in complete opposition to Ratzel's vision, Recluse considers geography not to be unchanging, it is supposed to evolve commensurately to the development of human society. His marginal political views resulted in his rejection by academia. French geographer and geopolitician Jacques Ancel is considered to be the first theoretician of geopolitics in France, and gave a notable series of lectures at the European Centre of the Carnegie Endowment for International Peace in Paris and published Gepolitique in 1936. Like Recluse, Ansel rejects German determinist views on geopolitics including Haushofer's doctrines. Braudel's broad view used insights from other social sciences, employed the concept of the long durée, and downplayed the importance of specific events. This method was inspired by the French geographer Paul Vidal de la Blache who in turn was influenced by German thought, particularly that of Friedrich Ratzel whom he had met in Germany. 
Braudel's method was to analyze the interdependence between individuals and their environment. Vidalian geopolitics is based on varied forms of cartography and on possibilism founded on a societal approach of geography i.e., on the principle of spaces polymorphic faces depending from many factors, among them mankind, culture, and ideas, as opposed to determinism. Due to the influence of German geopolitik on French geopolitics, the latter were for a long time banished from academic works. In the mid 1970s, Yves Lacoste, a French geographer who was directly inspired by Ansel, Braudel and Vidal de la Blache wrote La Geographie, California Cert de Bord et Faire la Guerre Geography First Use is War in 1976. This book which is very famous in France symbolizes the birth of this new school of geopolitics if not so far the first French school of geopolitics as Ansel was very isolated in the 1930s to 40s. Initially linked with Communist Party evolved to a less liberal approach. At the end of the 1980s he founded the Institut Français de Géopolitique French Institute for Geopolitics that publishes the Herodote Review. While rejecting the generalizations and broad abstractions employed by the German and Anglo-American traditions and the new geographers, this school does focus on spatial dimension of geopolitics affairs on different levels of analysis. This approach emphasizes the importance of multi-level or multi-scales analysis and maps at the opposite of critical geopolitics which avoid such tools. Lacoste proposed that every conflict both local or global can be considered from a perspective grounded in three assumptions representation, each group or individuals is the product of an education and is characterized by specific representations of the world or others groups or individuals. Thus, basic societal beliefs are grounded in their ethnicity or specific location. The study of representation is a common point with the more contemporary critical geopolitics. Both are connected with the work of Henri Lefebvre La production de l'espace, first published in 1974 Diachrony. Conducting an historical analysis confronting long periods and short periods as the prominent French historian Fernand Braudel suggested. Diatopy, conducting a cartographic survey through a multiscale mapping, connected with this stream, and former member of Herodote Editorial Board, the French geographer Michel Foucher developed a long-term analysis of international borders. He coined various neologism among them, horogenesis, neologism that describes the concept of studying the birth of borders, diade, border shared by two neighboring states for instance U.S. territory has two terrestrial diades, one with Canada and one with Mexico. The main book of this searcher, France et Frontières, France and Borders first published in 1991, without equivalent remains as of yet untranslated in English. Mitchell Foucher is an expert of the African Union for Borders Affairs. More or less connected with this school, Stéphane Rosier can be quoted as the editor in chief of the online journal L'Espace Politique. This journal, created in 2007, became the most prominent French journal of political geography and geopolitics with Herodote. 
A much more conservative stream is personified by François Thule. Thule was a French expert in geopolitics, and a former official of the Ministry of Civil Defence. Thule taught geopolitics of the religions at the French War College, and has written 30 books devoted mainly to geopolitical method and its application to various parts of the world. He is particularly interested in the Orthodox, Shiite, and Buddhist religions, and in troubled regions like the Caucasus, connected with F. Thule, Americ Chaupradé, former professor of geopolitics at the French War College and now member of the extreme right party, Front National, subscribes to a supposed new. French school of geopolitics which advocates above all a return to real politic and clash of civilization Huntington the thought of this school is expressed through the French Review of Geopolitics headed by Chaupradé and the International Academy of Geopolitics Chaupradé is a supporter of a Europe of nations, he advocates a European Union excluding Turkey, and a policy of compromise with Russia in the frame of a Eurasian alliance which is en vogue among European extreme right politists and supports the idea of a multipolar world including a balanced relationship between China and the US. French philosopher Michel Foucault's dispositif introduced for the purpose of biopolitical research was also adopted in the field of geopolitical thought where it now plays a central role. Russia In the 1990s a senior researcher at the Institute of Philosophy, Russian Academy of Sciences of the Russian Academy of Sciences, Vadim Simbursky coined the term, "...island Russia", and developed the "...great limitrophy concept. Colonel General Leonid Ivarshov retired, a Russian geopolitics specialist of the early 21st century, headed the Academy of Geopolitical Problems Russian, Akademia Geopoliticheski Problem which analyzes the international and domestic situations and develops geopolitical doctrine. Earlier, Colonel General Leonid Ivarshov headed the main directorate for international military cooperation of the Ministry of Defense of the Russian Federation. Vladimir Karyakin, leading researcher at the Russian Institute of Strategic Studies, has proposed the term, "...geopolitics of the third wave." Alexander Dugan, a Russian fascist and nationalist who has developed a close relationship with Russia's Academy of the General Staff wrote, "...the foundations of geopolitics, the geopolitical future of Russia." in 1997, which has had a large influence within the Russian military, police, and foreign policy elites. Topic. See also. Equals equals notes. <laughs>